when this whole thing started, I had posted this this document with a bunch of sort of Middle Ages Celtic mythology, you know, stuff that was that I had a hard time. I've had a hard time describing exactly what I'm trying to, what I intend by it to people. But you know, I posted this document for a sorcerer and sword setting in this sort of medieval Atlantis-like island chain uh, where you've got, you know, knights and troubadours running around and you've also got Celtic pagan stuff happening and, uh, you know, this kind of, this kind of world that was inspired by a lot of both like, you know, reading things like Jirel Ajwari and, uh, I think maybe King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany, which isn't strictly sword and sorcery, but this kind of medieval and just medieval history reading, this kind of desire I had to do a medieval fantasy world, a medieval fantasy, you know, adventure type thing that wasn't, it wasn't like when uh, a couple of years ago when we were, me and I was doing a seminar with Ron and Erman, and we were talking about, you know, old games like Dragon Quest and these other sort of medieval fantasy games. Ron used the, uh, the, the use the term or he, uh, he said something like some of these things feel, feel more like Disneyland than the real, a real medieval world. So I, I remembered that and I sort of I sort of wanted to just get this medieval fantasy that felt really medieval. I've said medieval about a million times in the last minute, but you know what I mean. Uh and that's what I was trying to get across uh, get across to people and you you were both interested I think and and you uh you uh, made some characters. I mean I I remember reading the document um I I I've run a sorcerer as well as sorcerer and sword always as the GM prior to this. This is the first time I, I, I've played as a player. So, I, I mean, I was kind of chomping at the bit just to, you know, play on, on that side of things. And I, I remember reading the document and, and there was also a map uh, and you that's know, right. You, yeah. you had, uh, and, and you had a, a little, uh, kind of mythical back background that you had provided for the right. world. Yeah, so, I made up people, little stories and things. Yeah, so I mean, I I I thought all of that was you know evocative. Um, I mean, I, I I with my character, I was leading leading more and in, leaning into the more uh, kind of. The, the kind of Celtic tribal side of of things, um, whereas whereas Greg was going more into the more kind of courtly um, side of things, um, and I, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah it's interesting. You both like took the the biggest possible split of the different cultures, right? Like all the way one way and all the way another way. Yeah, there was no sort of like as I might have imagined, and I, it still hasn't happened. I'm doing another game, and no one's really taken this idea of, like, a foot in both, of a foot in both worlds type character. It's always, like, all the way one way or all the way the other way. So far, it's been that way anyway. So that's sort of interesting. Maybe I didn't express this both worldliness. <laughs> uh idea in my document that that well uh but but no so you yeah and so you had this sort of tribal shaman and uh you know greg had this uh courtly uh you know courtly knight with the full the full package of arms and you know courtly love with this unapproachable woman and uh, and so that was sort of where I, uh, one of the things that I used to, you know, make the first, uh, the first adventure or the first story. Yeah. And, and I didn't, uh, yeah, I'm with, with the document that you had put together, um, 
I didn't, uh, I don't think you indicated uh, whether there were specific, um, um, specific texts that you were thinking for your sources. I mean, you, you just mentioned uh, some. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, yeah so I mean, that's, that's part of the problem, right? <laughs> it's like, it's kind of all, it's kind of all jumbled up in my head and I don't <laughs> have like a, I don't have like a really good, like, like this book. Actually, I'll tell you what, with the second group, like they were having, like Sam was having the same trouble figuring out what I was after. And I ended up telling him, well, like he, you know, he said like, is it like King Arthur or something? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, maybe like what would Robert E. Howard have done if he wrote the King Arthur stories? Maybe that's sort of uh, a way to go. And he liked that, but then his his character ended up having nothing to do with knights or anything like that. So that's interesting. But, uh, you know, Arthurian legend by way of Robert E. Howard is the closest I've gotten to describing what it might be about. But of course, it ends up being about whatever the players, you know, the characters, the players make up their characters, and then you've got this whole different, you know, perspective on what what the setting is about is it does end up coming a, in a large proportion from the characters like it, again i didn't necessarily i hadn't necessarily thought that like crusades would be against the pagans would be i mean obviously they'd be an element but they would be but not that they would be the defining that is the conflict between two cultures would be the defining element but it kind of is in both in both games clearly people saw that as as like the a big thing to get hooked into and it's hard to it only takes one in your case both both of you sort of are playing that angle in the other game like one Alan's Alan's character is the is playing the knight uh, with the the courtly <laughs> love with with his lady. Only in this case, his lady is the demon, but he's got this whole thing with the conflict between Christians and the pagans, and it does kind of once that's in once that's in there, it seems like it it shapes the entire the entire set of options that the other characters bring in are all feed into where they stand with respect to this you know this this grand conflict between two cultures sort of shapes the big picture of what's going on for everybody is what I'm is what I'm trying to say is is what's been ended up happening in in the games you know so that's kind of an interesting interesting thing that I didn't necessarily I didn't necessarily think too much about when I was making the document, right? When I made the little paper, I was mostly thinking about just the feel, feel and look and, you know, these different aesthetics. Aesthetics is all I was really thinking about when I made the document and actual situations kind of came from the input that the players had in terms of what they wanted their characters to do and to be about. Anyway. Yeah, um, a, a question I, I have um, is, you know, given the characters that we initially came up with, as well as their kickers, I think it would have been um, easy to just have those as two completely different stories, right? that uh you know we could have the the two sorcerers uh running around um you know doing their own their own things but you know in in both of the the arcs uh we we ended up um you know in the same right. in the same area right well in the first one i guess i saw it as my if not obligation, certainly my prerogative to try to put the two stories together because I thought it'd be because it's just interesting to have. I'm it's a it's a question in my mind as to whether 
whether I seriously considered keeping the two separate. In other words, did I make this as a choice? Did I put the two characters in proximity as a conscious choice from among various options that I understood well? Or did I just instinctively do it because that's what I thought based on prior games that I was supposed to do? I, I'm not sure. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly in when I was playing Troll Babe with you and, and your daughter, um, Robbie, um, I was fine with keeping them in completely different places. But for whatever reason, uh, or and of course that's the player's choice. The player's choice in that game is whether they want to be in different places or not. Right. In uh, in this game, it's sort of vague. You know, the player comes up with a kicker that expresses some content, and you know, Greg's kicker, Greg's character, um, Guillaume, his kicker is clearly explicitly about his home and his immediate the surroundings of his immediate world right where he's he's in this castle and his father comes back from the grave you know from the crypt of the family castle and then your uh, shosig's uh shosig's uh kicker uh, you know the tribal shaman was that he was following he was going to follow or this this sacred stone i think it, it was a tree or it was a stone or uh, had shattered and some strange being had slithered away from the stone into the water. And the implication in that, I felt, was that you were going to try to figure this out or follow it. And just based on the sort of possibilities of that, it seemed like an obvious thing to do, that whatever had slithered into the water had slithered towards the action in Greg's kicker. And so... I guess I would say, given the opportunity, given the clear opportunity to bring them together, I brought them together, yeah. and you know, just to see what happened, and uh, and that's where where we were. Um, Greg, uh, did you have any uh, anything yeah. you wanted? Yeah. So I found the, the document was like really evocative so it was interesting i really did not expect what kind of characters or what kind of stories we we actually had <laughs> by reading the document um so well i think like the exchange of id was really important because um so we did not make a session we did not do a session where we discuss about characters together but we exchanged a bit on the Discord, I think. And it's true that I was going for a tribal shaman or something very castle-y. Oh, okay. <laughs> and when I've seen like that Ruby was going like on the tribal shaman, I was I was like, oh, okay, it should be cool to totally mirror the story. Okay, yeah. So it was really I well I was reflecting on that, um, and I thought it would be really cool to have like those mirroring stories, those mirroring cultures. Right, right. And um, I wasn't so I asked you, I think, about the source materials at some time, and yeah, <laughs> and I've read it. So I, uh, I, I actually read Jewel of Joy last year, and it okay. was really on my mind when 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 we right, talked right. about it. And uh, and you talked about oh, what is the name again of the other book? Um, I, uh, the King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany. No, no, the Mabinogion. Oh, the Mabinogion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's that's something that I've read a couple times okay. on and off over the years. But it, it's kind of this Welsh mythology. It's a some of the stories are. Kind mm -hmm. of like I think Peridur and the Mabinogian is basically the Percival story from King Arthur. So it's actually right. It was actually originally written in French, and then oh. you know some medieval Welsh monk or whatever 
you know, reinterpreted the story in Welsh, I guess. I don't know. It's all, you know, all of these Arthurian type sources just go round and round and copy each other. And so who knows what the original source is? Well, I yeah. mean, Gretchen is why the original personal writer, but. Okay, but I've read it when you talked about it. So. Oh, okay, okay. So that's I found it. I've read it. So, so I I took inspiration from those two things. Like I was, I really had this on my mind. Those book. Um, what I should say, um, I'm I don't feel so much that there is like a cultural clash or that it's really um, the biggest stake in our stories. So I'm interested about this because. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I, I, well, it's there, but even if there, it's, it's very colorful, you know, even in the last story, when, okay, it's a crusade on those pagan right. lands, but everything is about this betrayal between, you know, right, between, right, 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 between yeah. those knights, you know. Yeah. I guess maybe it's just that, <laughs> you know, not that the story is about the cultural clash, but that it's a dominating. It's a dominating context that yeah. there is a, that there is a clash, and it's not, you know, these cultures haven't successfully blended or settled settled into each other or become a, you know, a blended culture at all. And in staring, so it's my, so I'm jamming sorcerer. I was jamming sorcerer. I just started. Um, mm -hmm a game, a, a sorcerer and sword game. So I was interesting to, uh, interested to play, mm -hmm. to, you know, to have a comparison with my own practice. Right, and right. It, it's very inter interesting because it's totally different. Uh, I Actually, my other game is not successful at all. Oh, no. Um, and it's the second time I, yeah, it's the second time I play sorcerer. The, the first time was two years ago, I think, or three years ago mm -hmm. with Ron and Laura. Um, you can see them on the on the website, and it was very really, it it was very strange for me. <laughs> I really had trouble to make my my first char character. We had to discuss it by mail with Ron. I, I've redone the the whole character like two times before I sent him a, a new element, and and my players had the same trouble, surely because I, I'm not so good to to talk with them. <laughs> Um, to you know, to to choose an element with meaningful for the story, but uh, right. meaningful is not a good word. Just something not too much abstract and not a story. Right, and, uh, right, right. Yeah, it's a weird. It's it can be difficult if you're not. I mean, I still find it difficult, like making up the character for Robbie's sorcerer game a year or two ago. I can't remember exactly when it was, but making up that character was difficult for me. Yeah. It's it's kind of this. You have to. It feels like you have to get in this mode where you're. Right, yeah, like you're almost at the story of the character, but then you pull back a little. Like you have to find that right spot. To. But get the the material that's evocative but you don't go too far with it yeah yeah and i don't know for you robbie but but this time it was really easy for me like it flows by, by itself like i was okay. okay i need this mentor I, I i had this place where i do my ritual this is my castle this is my wife <laughs> I mean, every, I don't have to do a story. I just have to picture what I, what my character see when he, he, he goes into those, you know, those four quadrants. Right. There you go. Yeah. Well. So I think that's part of the learning curve. Well, I don't know, Ruby, it was your first time as a, as a player. As a player, yeah. So how was it for you? <coughs> I mean, um, you know, the... the Sorcerer, I I do find is, is um, e even you know having played it or even GMing it, I'm always going back to the rule book. It's like one of these things where I feel like mm -hmm. okay, I, I need to keep on rereading things. Um, so, yeah. but but I I I think the fact that um, I think it made a big difference in this game that all of us. We're familiar with the game 
prior to to, yeah. to these sessions mm -hmm. so that like you know I, I remember when we first started playing it, it it was already natural that we were we were diving into the rituals right the, you know and 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 you know when i played with beginning players uh you know I felt like as a GM, when it was all beginning, like the first game I played, it, it, it was with players, none of whom had played the game before. We were all kind of new to it. And so there were a lot of aspects where um, I was really, as a GM, having to um, kind of push the players and kind of remind them, oh, you know, you can you can summon and, and right, you know, here's a demon that, in, that you know, just of you know, some of the, the, the different mechanics and, and kind of aspects of the game that, that, uh, you know, I had to kind of push, whereas it makes a world of difference when it, where, you know, everybody is, has, has some, some level of familiarity and, and comfort with, with the rules it kind of makes it, you, you know, makes for a different experience. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just the, just the commitment, I was talking about this with Sam in another context, but just everyone being sort of committed to trying to stay on top of the rules, right? As opposed to some other situations you might have been in where, you know, the game master sort of knows the rules, but everyone else is just expecting the game master to cover for them or explain to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that puts a lot on one person, right? And just everyone being willing to pitch in and, and help is uh, extremely helpful uh, for, especially for a game with a lot of depth like this. Yeah, and it's true. My, my first game, uh, we, we, we never did any ritual. We, did, we, didn't, we did not use any ritual for the whole game. I think it was a <laughs> six session. Oh, and, wow. and it was not a problem, actually. I mean, the... the <laughs> The game really works without, mm -hmm. but here I was really like confident. I think it's one of the first thing I did, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I want to summon something because I knew I wanted this demon, but I, but I needed enough, you know, and yeah, yeah. some other powers. Um, so yeah, I I think here I really felt I really discovered some things you can do with the rules. I mean, I, I think it's a really good game for what we used to call wrongly power gamer, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, it seems like the, the rules are made for this. Like, you, you can discover things by tweaking the rule and trying to get your bonus right, die right. And, and, and using this ritual with another ritual and boosting your law so you can... <laughs> right, right, and, the whole... And, and when it worked, I, I don't... I had... I don't remember. There was one game where I I discovered some kind of properties between the between powers, and it was like really cool. I because <laughs> it, not because it was powerful. I don't remember what was the effect actually. I just remember that everything felt wrong morally. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Ah yeah. I can punish my demons right. so I can make her love to fill her needs. So. And, it's yeah. some kind of very dysfunctional relationship. Right, right, right. Human. But it was all using the rules to, to have a bad, better result. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, well and, and like on that on that use of the punishing, uh, Ron even kind of writes about how right you can you can leverage that right uh, to you yeah. know get something that you want out of your out of your demon. Yeah. So that's another interesting thing. Um, okay, that's the first time I do a second kicker. Right. And I right. think there's a, I mean, the it's a new, not a new game, but but there's new properties emerging. I think from from the from continuing the game after a kicker. And for me as a player, um, it was all. Um, it was again most easier to most easy to 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 do the character because you know checking the elements and saying you know because we have the story of those elements it was really easy to rewrite the characters and the elements 
to have some kind of story that is flowing. Like, okay, my mentor, she left. Okay, I change it, and she changed quadrants. And, right, right. And it was really interesting to rewrite this di- diagram and, and those elements following the first story. So right. I, I really expect to, to do more like long-term game with Sorcerer to see where it leads. Yeah, and and it and it does strike me that that you know kind of with the um, you know when you finish up your one kicker and you know then you can rewrite things. I mean, you you can roll to increase your abilities, but for me, that's the least that that's the least interesting <laughs> thing. Like, okay, right, right. my my stamina goes up one. What 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 what's a lot more fascinating is the fact that you kind of you know between you know, going to a new kicker, you can, uh, you know, rethink that diagram, you can write, and also the, 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 the more powerful than, than kind of increasing the, the ability levels is, uh, you know, the, you know, you might change your, your price or, you know, some of those other elements that you might be, you might be uh, changing, which in terms of the, the gameplay, I think would be more, uh, um, more important than increasing your stamina by a point, although that helps. But right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Changing the descriptors, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's. A, yeah, I think you're right. I agree with this. Uh, it's more interesting than just getting one die for the <laughs> for the characteristic that you can rewrite the full sheet, and I mean. You don't rewrite. You just play the few sessions. So, so, well, uh, you don't write anything. It's not random. I mean, yeah. I felt really the desire to rewrite those decrypt- descriptors to go that that way. So, right. okay, that was cool. Uh, interestingly, with my other group, it's it's not really working. But I, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. So, so there is. There is no player who knows who knew the rule, which makes it difficult. Um, when they want to do rituals, I have to get back to the rule book to check. Something that we did a lot actually, but it was not a problem in in our game because I mean every every everyone was really involved and engaged mm-hmm. in the character and what is going. In my other game, it's not really working. People are just waiting. What's the rule? I didn't get it. Uh, and I, I have to read the book. Who is waiting? Yeah. Uh, they don't. One of them is not. Don't under, doesn't understand English, so so she can participate with a rule book. Or, oh, I see what you're and, saying. And, yeah. and uh, it's really weird for me because, well, I just think this game doesn't work with that group. The other one and. Because, but here, I mean, it was all flowing by by itself. Right, right. Yeah, it, it was interesting. I mean, like I said earlier, we did have a lot of, I mean, that was even with a lot of times where we we stopped for quite a long time to talk about the rules or to discuss what what the dice what application of the dice rules we would make for this situation or that situation right but it was always it was always with an eye towards getting back into the fiction uh you know just with integrity it, and so i think we were never lost sight of the rule talking about the rules never made us lose sight lose sight of what we were there to do Right, so I think that's uh, I think that's helpful, and and that means that we had we knew what we we knew what we were there to do in the first place, which might be you know if you have a problem in if there's any players in your other game who are maybe along for the ride or you know or just there to be there. I don't know if that's a problem you're having, but uh... I don't know. I don't think so. I I mean. Everybody was really excited with the game at first, but but does yeah, I think there's a learning curve, and and yeah. and yeah. and it depends on expectation too. Um, right. Uh, in my other game, um, 
I mean, I, I have I have some kind of world situation. Okay, I can relate it to some <coughs> things too. I've because I think that by playing in this game, I've seen things in the other game. Okay. Um, and there's there's a specific moment when we play together. Um, you know where this Henri de Bray, this NPC, mm -hmm. uh, we know we know he's doing those stuff. He know things he does, he doesn't share. And I was like, there there was one moment when I realized I will I was sending my demon as a spy, which basically mm -hmm. she is. Yeah. But but I. As a character, I was mainly waiting to have information from that spy and then waiting and then sending a game. And I was kind of, I'm not sure about this. Do I, I mean, <laughs> I, was, I wasn't sure. I, I'm not really active or proactive. I mean, I'm just waiting for this information. And there was one moment when you just said, um, are you confronting him or some, something like this? I, okay. I, I think I, I I'm not even sure if you if it was a suggestion you made or if you were trying to remember what we are doing. Right, right. <laughs> but but anyway, when you said this, I I, I said to myself, yeah. In fact, in fact, I mean, it's really better if I confront him because I, I'm doing something proactive. It creates something. I think it was not just even for me. It was like I, I think it's cooler you know yeah, 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 yeah. for everybody for me first but for everybody and in the other game i have lots of words world situation when i think that they just want to role play interactions and right it's and but it's a mix of of problems i think so and they're right. in the middle of a situation like let's go to bind this huge demon and you have this huge demon, and they start interacting together, role playing together as PC. And I'm with this, this huge demon, you know, wants to fulfill. It. And so I act. And I feel that when I act, I'm interrupting them. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> you know? And they like, we're role playing, you know? They, they don't say it, but, but I, I, everybody feels yeah. it's not appropriate. But in the same time, I'm like, why 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 are you going there if if you just want to talk together what, i mean you're so sorry I'll just make your uh, you know your place somewhere but another problem is that i have too much elements that i added as a gm right so i have all this thing going on in the same place and they don't have time to you know to just pose to do something they could <coughs> have if they if they I mean, if they want it, right. but they, are, they they don't try to, you know, to create this moment, they, just, they wait that it happens. Okay, yeah. And and I think, I mean, that's why I say, I think it's not working for this group, which is a, a, a way to say, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking it up. <laughs> uh, yeah. And... And that's part of it, and and they don't, we don't have the same expectation from the game, actually. Right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, it's tough to, it's tough to say. I mean, it's, it's probably not all. I can't imagine it's all on, it's all on your, no, yeah, all on your part, right? You know, but like the thing about them just wanting to role play, I've sort of seen that, like in, in. Uh, In American sort of convention role playing, and like the the expectation that's come from like conventions to gaming stores that you will you will advertise your game and you'll have a four hour time slot and then people will show up and play your game and you're expected to entertain them. In those circumstances, like people just riffing on their characters or just talking the players just talking back and forth to each other is actually like it's like a break for the game master you know who in that who in that context has all the expectations put on them and so when the players just start talking to each other it's like it's like being able to sit back and do nothing is actually perceived as a a benefit or a or a success 
right? So I don't know if there's a similar culture in Europe at all, but there's, uh, you know, there's kind of this expectation, especially with like a Dungeons and Dragons type game that the actual actions you do in the game of going in the dungeon and fighting the monsters or whatever is completely pro forma. You know, it's just like the scripted, well, this is just the same activity we do all the time. And the actual point of us being in the game is to talk in character and to sort of express things to each other. It's almost like, you know, playing playing a multiplayer online video game that's very easy where you just sort of click with your mouse, but you're actually just talking to each other, right? Uh, so I don't know. And I, I you know, I, that's something culturally I've seen here, and I don't know if that's common uh, over there or not. But uh, yeah. that's also related to what what the game. I mean, the the game is working when not by itself. It's working when you you know very well what you want as a character in the in the right. moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you take a decision. I mean, yeah, and yeah. and the game puts you in a situation where you have to put a decision. But if right. you're trying to hold off, like I'm not taking a decision, I'm just role playing, or or what I mean by role, just role playing is, I mean, I I think there is this scene with also this this huge demon, <laughs> right. and and it's the first time they met, and and this demon has been bound. By 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 another sorcerer NPC, and and I mean the player is just like messing with her. Like uh, actually, he, he say the same. Th the, he says the same thing, but but six times in a row, but differently. <laughs> You're trying to do the same thing, but I, but and I'm like, I I mean, just roll your dice, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> what yeah, are no. what are you trying to do with her, you know? And right, and right. It, it's it, it's it's that moment where it's kind of murky. It's it's kind of murky there. I mean, I'm oh. not really I don't really understand what he's trying to do. He doesn't want doesn't want to say it. And I've been at that place. If you've seen. This game of sorcerer with with <laughs> Ron, when I'm like stuck and Ron keeps telling me, uh, he keeps telling keeps telling me, uh, what do you do? And I'm like, <laughs> what I wanted to do, yeah, but what do you do? Yeah, but what yeah. I expected from this scene, <laughs> yeah, I got. But what do you do? And I'm like, but I'm replaying. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and you have this. I mean, it's the definition of role play with. It's not talking in character. It's okay. what are you doing as an action? What, what decision mm -hmm. are you doing? And and at this moment, those players I have in the Europe group, what they want is just interacting. And I, I think it's also it's also related to the pandemic. I mean, <laughs> I, I think there's a part of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, like this is their socialization. And... Yeah. Yeah, so so it, uh, Greg, in that game, when when you're framing a scene, is, is it usually them who's framing it, or are you the one who's? No, no, I am, and I think it's part of the problem. What what I think it's part of the problem is that I frame all the scene, <coughs> almost all. I mean, it's not always dysfunctional. Sometimes it works. When I don't, it works very well. Mm -hmm. And when I do, I'm not sure I do it like I'm not sure I do it very great, you know. I think you really have to put the elements in place and say what are you doing with this. And I'm kind of frustrated because sometimes it's just they're just messing around in circles, mm -hmm. doing yeah. the same. I was um I yesterday was playing uh, a game called Polaris. Uh, written by, uh, well, it's either Ben Lehman uh, is the name uh, he went by when he wrote it. It also, P.H. Lee is the name uh, that the writer currently goes under. And Polaris um, has, it's GM-less, uh, and it has part of scenes which he refers to as, as free play. Okay, so you, you know, you frame a scene and you can get into 
kind of dialogue, but it wants you to really push into these more con conflict oriented parts of the scene, right? And that's where the mechanics really take off. And we, we were finding um, the the people playing the game, by and large, this is our first time playing it. And we were kind of debriefing at the end of the game. And, and you know, some of the players were, were saying that, you know, when we when we frame the scenes, sometimes the scenes are just kind of like dragging on, right? Where it's all free play, and it's the game really wants you to kind of push into the kind of conflict portion of of the game. And you know what we're going to try next time is that whenever we frame a scene, establish right from the get go, kind of what the 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 objective of the scene is or perhaps like pose you know say okay i have this question and i want to have this question answered i don't know what the answer is but i want the scene to do that but yeah we we, we kind of have come to the conclusion that um the game is working but it will it will tighten things up if when we're framing a scene that we had established more kind of clearly you know what what we were trying to drive towards with that scene what what's interesting i i i didn't feel this so on this game we played six session on on my game mm -hmm. and the general feeling is that they feel pushed you know into situation mm -hmm. and into into actions to take and and it's disturbing and I didn't feel this uh, during this game, for instance. So, uh, like, I don't know. I mean, that could be that could be me being less, uh, being a little too too easy on you. I don't know. Uh, in terms of, I frequently, well, with Guillaume, it was frequently quite easy. Well, I mean, you know, you usually wanted to do something. And so it was easy to react to that. Also, I I may have there are frequently times like where you're waiting in a castle for a battle to happen, right? Like in the first one, well, the battle's gonna happen tomorrow because that's when they get there, because there's this sort of idea of distance that I I kind of wanted to have a feeling that things took as long as they would to, you know what i mean like that there's a real time element i don't know to where if someone's over here and it takes a day to get to the castle then it takes a day and that's the time that's passed you know unless you have a demon that can teleport or something which you know some of that went on but so what I'm what I'm trying to get to in response to yours is that I may have been just my the, the pace I was setting may have been slow because I had it in my mind that I I wanted it to be a little slower or that I felt somehow that it should be slow in a way in a naturalistic way that time would pass naturalistically um but I maybe I'm that's just my speculation. I don't. I don't know if that's really uh, relevant uh, or. Be cool. I mean, the pace was was really great. Yeah. I I didn't feel pushed, but things were happening. Uh, I, I mean, I was. Yeah. No, it was. It wasn't a critic actually. It's like oh. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. No, I know. I just thought it was kind of an interesting, an interesting contrast. Um. There was something that I was wanting to talk about. I was curious about. So you mentioned a scene earlier where you went to confront. Uh, so we had this. So in this second adventure, we had Guillaume, your character of the night, was joined, was with these crusaders who were going to try to take this sacred relic, this heart, back from these pagans who had captured the castle where it was kept. And meanwhile, Robbie's character had bound in the previous adventure he had bound this demon this uh, 
powerful snake demon that was sort of related to his his tribe's religion. And it would sent them sent him on a mission looking for and he ended up being on a mission looking for this same heart for unknown reasons to him at the time, right? And so everyone wanted this heart. And I had made this, I had set it up so that Henri, who was the sole survivor of the castle's defenders, actually had the heart. He had fed it to his his demon, right? This dog, because Robbie's character, Robbie, you had made up this riddle, uh, and I was about where it was, and I was trying to like use the the references in the riddle to like fur and bone and things like that, and think, well, what would this, what would the answer to this riddle be? And so I came up with this whole idea of him having this this NPC having this wolfhound demon that he had fed the heart to, and he was with the Crusaders trying to take back the castle, and he was. Uh, he was sort of a linchpin character and that he was just trying to make sure that he had the heart himself, that everything, that everything ended up so that the heat was off him. He could safely defend the heart, you know, as he was trained and brought up to do and just get everyone else off his case and out and out of his, out of his castle, out of his land. Anyway. So at this one point, in the in the adventure or at this one point in the session when we started the session i had just asked you both if you knew where the heart was right as players if you had figured it out and what i was actually thinking about i was considering and this comes from my champions now experiences earlier this year where I had a lot of discussions about information and how to handle, you know, roles that give you information or how much information the players have or don't have. Or, um, I was thinking of just telling you, just outright telling you what would happen if I just outright told you where the heart was as me, Rod, to you, but then your characters still only knew what they knew. Like I decided that was that was a little much. Like that might have been too much, but it but it would have it would have been it's an interesting thought exercise because there's in that case you would only have been able to you would have had to you know create a portrait or choose the actions for your characters based on their bringing out expressing that character's motivations and not based on any desire to you know like solve the puzzle right or figure it out for yourself right because it would have been figured out um i'm just curious if you felt that like did you feel that just finding it as a player was motivating it all or did you feel like it was you were ever at cross purposes with being able to express your character because you were concentrating on this this may be my personal preoccupation because I have found in the past, I have found in these situations where there's like a goal you're trying to pursue. I feel like I somehow at times snap into this kind of tunnel vision game playing mode where I just want to get the objective and I'm not really thinking about playing my character or playing from inside the character. I was curious if, if either of you ever felt that kind of thing or if how you felt about there being this mystery or if you felt it was a, an impediment or a, or a barrier or if it was specifically something you enjoyed, I don't know. I think for me, it, it, it enhanced the experience to, to have, okay. have that, uh, you know, hidden from from you know my character and 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 kind of but, but because part of it was like right you, you know the una dread the powerful demon has and, and i thought it was also really interesting that that una dread really didn't have an idea of what was going on right. either right so, right so I, he, he he's giving me I, this 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 kind of um uh riddle <laughs> prophecy um 
but but he in turn is not uh you know completely in in control of of what you know you know he, he was uh i think as surprised as as we were when you know it's like oh the heart isn't here right. and and just having some right, right. vague sense himself but uh i mean i think it would have worked it would have worked fine the other way obviously the experience would change though right um if yeah yeah is the players uh knew it but yeah i i, I thought it was it was well and and then the 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 kind of revelation that occurred i thought really had some punch to it when when the 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 powerful demon swallows the um <laughs> swallows the dog well, yeah 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 that was actually something like the way that whole scene went i had i had no previous expectation that anything like that would end up happening but it just seemed natural in the moment right you know of course he's just going to eat the dog <laughs> you know what he's <laughs> <laughs> Poor dog. Uh, yeah, two things. Um, so I I agree. Uh, it it could. Um, okay, about knowing um uh, knowing where the herd is. I have two things to say. First, um, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's really interesting to to work this way. Um. And it's really what 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 Ron's calling the author stance, huh? which which really <coughs> for me it's really a break with everything I know. I I don't know if it's you use the same word in English if, in in French, but be, maybe that's part of my specific group here. Hmm. But we use the term meta gaming. Okay. Uh, which is yeah. Using informations your character don't doesn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, to act, which actually is what you're proposing. Right, right, and right. It, and it was like the worst thing to do. Uh, like it was forbidden. It was it was cheating actually. Right, before. right, right. And um, because generally people will use. I mean, you had the scenario, and the guy will crush your scenario because he knows this permission. So it's cheating, you know. Right, right. And, and you had all this this. Well, it was ten years ago, and and so it was important in that in that context that the the GM um, hides informations, right? And and so so it's really like mind breaking to say, yeah, everyone knows about it, and and actually it's, that that's I mean it's cool. I mean it's cool to do this meta gaming to say, okay, my character know where it is. What is he going to do? Oh, I oh am I oh will I explain this? So it still feels you know current, right? Right. But he will do it <laughs> by luck or I don't know. And and I mean it always happens every time in movies. You know, oh yeah, just they're on the same floor that the right. girl will. <laughs> so it's interesting. And the second thing. So I uh, yeah it 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 would be great I would love that um but the second thing is um I, I don't think we sink on the kick on the kinker on the kicker on Guillaume's kicker there because in fact I wasn't really interested with the relic I mean right right and I started to get interested because I mean it it, it became a thing like even all this king thing i was not sure i was hesitating because i i i was not really interested in that and all those npc were coming at me saying you want to do it do you want and i was like actually actually you don't get it i mean my mantra <laughs> is fucking <laughs> fucking disappeared and she's the love of my life and i'm so angry you know <laughs> And um, and when I wrote the kicker, um, to me the the kicker was really about I just killed the king, and right. and will be it will be a problem for me. I was expecting some kind of third scene story arc about me in this, in prison. Or I don't know. Trying right, to do right. things about it. I don't know what. And I think yeah, I I was not really engaged. I, I really had to work. 
this thing okay. about fighting the relic. Okay. Yeah. I think you. I don't know if you felt it, but I think I think you could you could feel it. At, you know, at the end. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what. I'm trying to go back to that first scene and what I was thinking. Well, so you, the way I came up with the whole thing about you being king was I, or this, these people who were sort of going to try to get you into this plot to make you the king was just that you had that guy, that second in command named Jacques. And I was just, I was just, okay, this is on the kicker. It must be something, you know, he hasn't said anything about this guy's personality or anything. And so, but he's the second in command and that's somehow important for, for Guillaume. And that's somehow important that I was, I kind of like that grew in my mind, maybe larger than it necessarily should have based on its position on the diagram, right? This was when I was still struggling with the diagram, actually. Um, but I, but I was just sort of seeing. I was sort of basically more following my own mind based on the things that I was seeing written on the diagram, and and just whatever seemed interesting caught my interest, sort of got inflated, and so. In that sense, that's probably where the deviation from what you expected came from, uh, right? But yeah, but I, I think we didn't really communicate. But I mean, it was fine. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. It was fine, lovely. But but it's true that I, in fact, I hesitated between two geekers, hmm. and because I think I just read Conan's story. I think it's Hours of the Dragon. You know, uh, where it's, it's the novel where he's, he's injured by a curse, a mm. curse, a illness curse. So he's so ill, but there's this big battle. So he, he designates one of his second of command who, who, who looks like him and he says, oh, okay. you know, and I was thinking about this with something of that, that was... I hesitated to frame the kicker like this, like the king is just dead and, and, and they want me to act as the, as the king, you yeah. know? And then I went with, wow, it's so cool if I just kill the king. And, it's, and, and, and in fact, I was saying to myself, like, I really don't know what I will do in the first scene. Right, right, right. So I was kind of surprised when it was easy. And <laughs> right, right. I mean, I was surprised by Jacques because he was so cool, like, haha, I did it. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's so cool, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, oh, yeah, but it's so easy. I mean, yeah, yeah. What, what's the story about now? Okay, and I was kind of, I don't know. But we, maybe because we didn't talk, I mean, I mean, we see there that it's really easy to go in our own directions. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a tricky question. Like even the the question of how much how much you should talk is yeah, tricky, true. right? Because you kind of run the risk of mapping it out too fa too far ahead and yeah. just making the story before you actually play the game is not that's not what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but there has to be some kind of uh, you know some kind of, well, I think the way, you know, like Ron says it in, you know, in Champions Now, the way he presents it is like as the GM, you you present your side to the other player and then your material to the other player or the other participant, and then they take it and do, they just do whatever their response is, and that's theirs, you know. Uh, there's this kind of back and forth, but it's not, you don't come to an agreement on what it's supposed to be about. You just, you just, you just throw your ball at them, and then they catch it and throw it back, right? Like when you're when it's your turn to contribute whatever you want to contribute, it's completely your responsibility. And so, in a way, that's kind of how that's kind of how this came about. It's just a question of 
you can look back at the process and ask, well, did I did I respond with all of the right amount of integrity to the material they presented to me? And like I said, and in my case, I said this is where I was struggling with presenting the the diagrams with using the diagrams, and we had a lot of you gave me a lot of links to uh, you know things that Ron had had said about that, and that was that was helpful to me. I still am. I'm still having trouble returning to the diagram as a constant feature of preparation because it seems so it's so instinctive to just go consecutively from whatever happened or continuously from whatever happened at the end of the next session to just start from that and just intuitively go from there for the next session. And I, I can see where mm. going back to the diagram is a way of reorienting yourself towards all the elements that should be in the story and making sure they all have their their place or, you know, making sure you're starting in a place that has, uh, you know, the integrity of what's been created before. Uh, like I said, it's it's difficult for me to, to, for some reason, to go back and recheck, recheck that and recreate the diagram and move things around. I, I, I don't know. I, well, I'd like to see, yeah. I'd like to see someone else do it. Well, it, I mean, I know Ron has printed examples, but yeah, uh, and, go ahead, and, Ron. and it may be that, you know, I mean, I think you're right that, that, you know, when you're in the middle, like after you've had, you know, the, 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 the game, you know, you started off on the kicker, right? You do have that kind of sequencing of events and, and right. It's, it's not simply going to be the diagram anymore. That's driving things. It's also going to be how scenes wrap up and what that might suggest about what, what would happen. And, you know, I, I think one of the values of, of going back to the kicker would, I mean, going back to the diagram might be in situations when you weren't really sure where the next scene would would take right. you, that the the diagram would, you know, probably illuminate right, right. some things for you. But right, it, it strikes me that a lot of times, yeah, that that a scene uh, wraps up and you you or that were a player knows immediately. Oh, right, that this is going to lead us right into this, yeah, this yeah. subsequent scene. Yeah, but I yeah, but, mm, no, I have the same problem with the other game. I, mm. I don't go to the diagram each time, and I go back to the subsequent, you know, mm -hmm. to what I feel. But but I feel the game works better if you really stick to the diagram because mm. okay, it's true. You you there is some kind of logic, and the player can take action and give you somewhere. But you can put these new elements in the diagram. Mm -hmm. And and it's just mixing things, and I really think it's something to do uh, before a session because I, I can see why in my own game things are not working also because of this because I get stuck in those scenes, and and it introduced new elements because I mean the the diagram doesn't tell you doesn't frame the scene by itself. Mm -hmm. I mean right. If you have the temp you have the castle and you have the lady on yeah. on the center of the diagram, well, you can be anywhere with the lady who is talking about the castle, or you can be anywhere in the castle talking about the lady. I mean, it's not, it's, I mean you can. Um, and I I think this I think there is an interesting thing. Um, I'm. This is another thing. Yeah, another thing I have with the diagram, which is puzzling me when I use it, is that the more I look at it and the more I play, the more I I put stuff on it. And so I'm not sure when I have to put something on the diagram or it's just secondary and I don't have to. And the more I think about it, the more I have stuff in the center of the diagram. Because the more I look at it, the more I can do some kind of association with everything. Right, right, right. You know, and, and everything is grabbed into the center, and I'm always like looking my three diagrams, saying, "Yeah, every, this, every, 
<laughs> it does everything in it. I don't know what to do. And to, res to respond to what you were saying about the kicker, I think you're right. I, I think, okay, negotiating too much is not good. And I think it's also part of how I, what kind of elements, the learning cube about the elements of the player. Right. And if I was not so much interested in the relic, may, maybe I should not put it as an element and just focus on my on the kicker I want and put elements only, you know, I want mm -hmm. to see. Right. And to me, it's true that the relic was like some kind of MacGuffin but I put it, and maybe you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it became I, the MacGuffin, actually. Right, right. And and that's how I felt about it. I mean, it was just color in my kicker, and and maybe if I want to focus the kicker on specific thing, well, I have to communicate it through the elements. Right, right. Yeah. Uh... And how is it going with your own other group? Because it's interesting because we all know the rules, but they don't. Um, that's not. That's actually not true. It turns out, or well, they all have the book. They all have the book, and they have read oh, okay. the, the book or parts of the book. So they and there's you know there's a learning curve as we keep going back to the book and discussing things. You know, uh, I think they haven't. They haven't played before, but they have read the rules, right? So that's so just that by itself is helpful, um, and it, it's really it's really interesting. I just uh, you know all their characters have just sort of have just sort of gone, and they're just going for it. And you know we're using the rules; they're doing sorcery. It's it, it's pretty neat. It's it's been real, real. It's been a real easy, easy start, I think. With some, with some discussion and some bumps, but. Uh, yeah, one, yeah. one other question I I have for you, Rod, um, with mm -hmm. uh, the demons, um, I I think you know Garen was uh you know i think much easier for me to deal with and and una dread was, right, was, right. was more of a, a of a thorn in <laughs> in uh yeah. show said's side and part of that was well i mean he was he was more powerful one and then my right. my i was always and this was i think made it interesting uh but that you know the binding was weak right that 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 he had the upper right. hand and I think right, right. That Elise also had, wasn't your bind? Okay. Yeah, you know, wasn't Elise also kind of uh, had more points? Okay, you may recall, this is the part that's embarrassing, but you may recall that I was reading the dice wrong when we started <laughs> playing. And so there were all these really swingy results. So Elise's thing was really high at first, but then I had you re-roll it. And in this in the second role for Elise's binding, uh, Greg's character Guillaume was a little higher on her and okay. had a little bit of an upper hand, and that actually matched more the way I had been playing her. For anyone who's listening to this, so I guess I might as well just talk about this thing with the dice. I was reading this was only possible because we were playing online, and you were reporting your results to me, and I was just telling you how many victories or the winning side had got but i was i was doing this thing where i was compared anyway i i really don't want to talk about what i was doing but it was wrong and so i was giving these results that were really swingy like lots of victories one way or the other um but uh, once i realized i was you know i thought about that i was like these dice are these dice are really swingy it's less like once I heard the little voice saying, are you sure you're doing it right? I went back and actually read the book and I was like, oh no. Uh, but, 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 but with Unadred, I mean, we, we, we figured that out and, and he, he did. Yeah, it's still, it was still very, it was still very high for Unadred. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm just wondering, yeah, like, you were, you know, how, how that plays out. Uh, Cause you know, when I, when I GM sorcerer again, <laughs> I, I am wondering like, okay, if, if that kind of situation emerges, like the, I don't know that the rules always spell out like mechanically how that works. I mean, I think to some extent, right. It's something that the, that the GM keeps in mind of, of how, yeah well yeah right and well the binding strength can can be a bonus to whoever side is on top when they're directly antagonistic to each other like if the demon wants to resist a command right you can add the binding strength where it's appropriate and and things like that uh i'll admit that i don't know if i necessarily did the best job of exploiting that well like with Garen and Scarvish, you know, your fangs, your mm -hmm. weird fang dentures and Guillaume's sword in particular. I had this real fixation with object demons in particular that I would, it was important to express. It was important that they express themselves like naturalistically, like a, like just through these humming or weird sensations. Naturalistically is a weird word to use. But, you know, they don't talk. They just sort of express themselves. But it's actually through these, like, feelings and urges. But it's actually really difficult to do that. Uh, because the annotations in the annotated sorcerer book, it makes, he discusses, it makes clear that the demons should all, demons should always be able to communicate accurately what they want or what they perceive or what they're thinking to the sorcerer. And so however you... However, you fictionally describe that, you can, you know, you can express what the demon is trying to say. You can just say what the demon, you can just say verbally what the demon is trying to tell you. And then retroactively, you can say, all right, well, he expresses it by humming or throbbing or whatever. And you, the sorcerer just intuitively knows he means, you know, like the, Lassie is in the well. That's an American reference. Uh, but the, you know, he knows the demon is trying to tell you you should find the huntsman in, in the forest or whatever. But because I, because I was really focused on trying to make these object demons communicate in a cool, like expressionistic way, or I, it was too much to take. It was too much to take on to try to do the aesthetics, to try to do the aesthetics and do the actual communication all at once. Uh, right. Uh, and I ended up never really characterizing those demons very, very well. They were kind of passive. There's also the question of whether, I don't know, I haven't, I should probably go back and watch that Ron's music music sorcery series because it was all object demons there and i know he characterized them he just gave them voices that were at least in the ones i watched you know he spoke verbally in the voice of the demon but we were meant to understand that the demon was just was not actually talking it was just sitting there and there was the sort of this almost like it's what it's what the sorcerer thinks the demon is saying to him, but it's also, it is really what the demon is saying, right? Uh, so that's just something specifically with object demons that I find to be a particular problem, uh, self-created problem. Um, but I may have lost the thread. Was there... What were you? What were well, you trying to ask me? Uh, part remember? of it was just just about. I mean, I, I think one of the challenges of of being the GM for Sorcerer is, in addition to everything else, you have all these demons that you're also kind of responsible for. And I, but yeah, then I was yeah. thinking specifically about the situation where you have a sorcerer whose uh, demon has the upper hand on the binding role, and and how exactly you think about putting that into play right well it, it, in the case of unadred i just sort of had him do whatever he wanted kind of as i conceived of it and sometimes one of the tricky things with unadred was 
deciding whether he was there or wasn't there for a scene because I kind of established early on that sometimes he just slunk off to go eat people or horses or who knows what, wherever he felt like going. And so that created a situation where he wasn't necessarily always going to be there when you were talking to another character about him. Right. He might be there or he might not. And so I, I may have like let off a little pressure there on, on Shosig by having, having him frequently not be around when Shosig was trying to figure out what to do about him. Uh, right. But, but when he was there, I tried to make sure that, you know, he was, he was going to do whatever he felt like doing, you know? Yeah. So, so I don't know. I mean, I, it was a, he was a fun character to play. I liked playing him and I liked playing Elise. Uh, yeah. Elise expressed was, was fairly under Guillaume's control a lot of the time, but she kind of expressed her, her nature in certain aspects where, Guillaume sent her to spy on the other dukes, on the dukes. She knew what to say to Guillaume for maximum impact on him about how the duke had been talking very disrespectfully about his relationship with Catherine. And so, you know, in my mind, I don't necessarily know, right, if she reported what he said accurately or if she enhanced it to make the maximum effect that she wanted to see happen, which was, you know, her desire is corruption. So she likes the idea of tearing this, tearing apart these bonds or these structures or seeing seeing people backstabbing each other, being at each other's throats. And so in a certain sense, you know, she she may have enhanced the truth. And I I don't know. I just said what I thought she would say, right? Based on based on what I knew the other characters she was spying on were thinking about and talking about. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing there, trying to express the demon's priorities yeah it's in my own game in, in, the, the, in the game i gm it's really difficult for me to deal with all this demon mm -hmm. uh reaction action but i think the problem is is it's because i have too much uh, things i put you know if yeah I, I mean if I had to do it again, uh, I'm not sure I will do with this group, but, but if I had to do it again, I, I, I will just stick to the element diagram. Mm -hmm. and But I don't know, I, I always have this fear, what will happen? What should right. I do? But, no, I, but, I know. Yeah. But you always, I mean, we have, if we have at least some characters in the cover and and the demon, I mean, do, and we cross them. <coughs> Everything should be okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. I one thing I was trying to do, I had started out intending to do in this session, in this last round, in this last adventure or whatever, was to not just not have any NPC sorcerers, but they kept popping out of the woodwork just because. Well, Ragnit, I had already established, was a sorcerer. She has certain parameters in that she, I had decided that she never, as a matter of principle, she never binds with demons. She only pacts with them, which is something that's alluded to in Sorcerer and Sword as a possibility. And then, you know, maybe, maybe if her back were to the wall, maybe she'd end up in a situation where she felt she had to bind, but that wasn't likely to happen. And then Henri, making Henri de Bray a sorcerer was something I wasn't going to do at first, but it, I don't know, it, it just got away from me. <laughs> and it's, and the reason it's tricky to have these NPC sorcerers running around is because a sorcerer's range of possible actions with all the different sorcery options is so broad that it feels like it's very difficult to do justice to them. Mm. Right? 
like it's almost if they're a sorcerer, they should be a very proactive pro, pro protagonist. And if it's not, it's kind of like because you're you're really narrowing the options for them just because it would be too hard on you otherwise. And so that's that's a reason I think why I've I I like the idea of just having as few avoiding NPC sorcerers if at all possible, but it it seems difficult. It so far in this game and in the other game, it's been difficult for me to either resist the temptation or or figure out another way to frame what this character is. Like in Sorcerer and Sword, a lot of characters can actually be demons, you know, because there's these imminent demons, so strange, mysterious beings from the old world can be you know demons rather than sorcerers even if they're presented as kind of mm -hmm. mysterious robed figures who do magic right it doesn't have to be a sorcerer it could be a demon mm -hmm. um, but that's just something i'm trying to i'm thinking about uh, and you know not in this in this sort of high fantasy world that i'm having i'm having trouble uh not having other NPC sorcerers in the mix, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I don't know if, uh, where to go from there, if anyone else has anything else they want to uh, address. What is it, 314 right now? This. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing comes to mind. I mean, I, I it no. was a great game. I think it was, uh, and I, yeah. I really enjoyed being okay. able to go through two, two, two kickers. Yeah, yeah. A new, new experience as well. That was. Yeah, it was. That will be great to really. Uh, it's cool to make a pose, but that will be great to get back to this guy and game later in the year. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely like to do that. I, I've really enjoyed it a lot. And I've, I've enjoyed, like, so far with both of the games, there's been a lot of commitment just to the, the characters and to the imaginative imagery and to the feel of this, the world and cultivating it and making it richer. And that's been, that's been something that's really neat and a lot of, a lot of fun to see. And it's, uh, in some ways, for me, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of been a a redemption of this medieval fantasy idea in that it's it's much richer and more both grounded in reality and weird and strange at the same time than things I've experienced in the past with Dungeons and Dragons, where it's just sort of this boilerplate, you know, well, I guess there's a king and he wants you to go kill some works and stuff right like that, right? where everything feels like it's made of cardboard. And this has been like a, a really neat experience in kind of making the world rich and rounded. Uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. And uh, Yeah, the, the tricky thing is to, uh, I, I don't feel, uh, in my other game, well, I so I'm not sure, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to stop. But what I had in mind, was to begin like with the first kicker and then to do a kicker like your last kicker. Like now we're going to play the last adventure your your character will play. Okay. And they get back just in between, you know? Okay. I'm, and I I know you I don't know how to do this and I, I mean I don't I, the conclusion the conclusion I've come to is I'm reluctant to I'd be reluctant to do that in such a formal structured way now. Okay, so this is actually something that another thing that, that's worth bringing up because when we started our second kicker, we talked about trying to start in a different place uh, or trying to come up with a you know like a different take on the characters or start in a different place. And what I ended up feeling is that doing that just to do it is not necessarily the best because I felt like 
show sig's kicker elements like ret the things that had happened to Shosig or that was important to Shosig where he had bound the super powerful demon that was super important to his tribe. Like I felt like something was missed by not like following up on that or by making, you know, Robbie go to this other place and just respond to this, uh, you know, like we're going to be on this other island and just make up a kicker for that. Uh, I felt like things would have been better if I had just, uh, Or if, how, what would be the way to describe it? Well, like if, if Robbie, you, if you wanted to just see what was going to happen next with your character, then that would override any kind of time, any kind of idea of time jumping, you know, like it has to be everyone. It has to be everyone agreeing that they want to go to a different place of time or or that that's what we should be i mean we did all agree but in in the end i felt like it didn't serve robbie's character as well or as easily as it maybe served greg's character given the events of the previous adventure i what uh what do you think about that yeah because well i i certainly do think that it made the writing of my second kicker um pretty i mean straightforward maybe too too strong but i mean i was just right thinking about you know if 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 i was just giving thought to okay what are the repercussions of show said now being bound to this uh powerful demon who also um as as part of his need eats people right i mean right. which you know and and like being on an island with the tribe that that yeah, you know, just kind of putting that right. through my mind of like what 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 would the repercussions of that be and and how would the tribe be responding to that um and how and, right. you know how would show said you know kind of deal with that which kind of just right, led right. me into kind of the the second kicker that I came up with right whereas if we if we went to a, a completely other you know stream i I guess I would have to kind of think about uh I mean, it, it would be, be, be possible, but it would it would have been more, you know, for me, a, a little more um, less, you know, I would have fewer kind of immediate strings to to kind of pull on. Right. Well, and even even in the in the time jump we did, I think it was it, it seemed like it was difficult for you to get get the strings you did have to go where you know I uh, I had specified you were going. Right. It was. It wasn't as natural a transition as it might have been if we had just seen you back in your homeland on your island. And so that's what I'm trying to say in terms of jumping around. I think there's this kind of thing. Like, I think if everyone starts with it in mind that they're going to be writing short stories about this character, then maybe, you know what? Um, this is a flute in any in case anyone's wondering. Uh, you know what? We didn't use destiny at all, and I haven't seen actually Alan's character in the other game has a destiny. But that's an interesting mechanic that I think would help a lot to this short story creating mentality, in that you have a thing about your character that's that's constant, that's orienting your character. You know, if he's the crux of the conflict, well, whether he's in England or Russia or, you know, France or whether he's on Barsoom or, the, you know, another planet or whatever the setting is, he's the crux of the conflict. And that's the thing that's going to get me, that's going to orient me to what he would be doing in this new place, right? So if you don't have that, I think it's a little harder it's like the difference between writing short stories and writing an ongoing novel or writing an ongoing TV series, right? Where things just follow from what happened in the previous episode. That's more natural for people who've been kind of in the hobby for a while to do. Uh, doing the short, doing the short story thing isn't, doesn't come as easily. And it's also, 
it's also useful to think about what the conditions of the short stories, what conditions they were written under in the first place, right? Because Robert E. Howard just had a bunch of different characters. He would write this guy, he would write this Irish boxer one day, and then he would write Conan the next day. He writes Solomon Kane the next day or the next week or whatever. Write the Conan stories, however many of them they are. They weren't written, just written one after the other because he was supposed to write one this week. You know, he wrote Conan whenever he feel, felt like writing Conan, right? So there's certain, there's sort of an element of that, right? Like uh, if you take the attitude, if you if you play the game, and then you say, all right, well, whenever we're ready to go back to these characters, then you know, whenever you say you've got some an idea for the character, then we can come back to this game, right? We're not going to come back next week because we need to come back next week. We're just going to wait for when it's right for these characters to come back in our minds and however they come back, whatever they're doing, that's what we're going to address. Uh, that would be a way of doing it that's kind of like, that's kind of more in the spirit of the way the source material stories were written in some cases, I think. Yeah. In the same time, I mean, even without a destiny, I think if we play something like very late in the life of the characters, and then mm -hmm. we get back, you know, but that's so, almost like the like the Conan novel where he starts as a king, and right, then, right. And, and then he's not, he's not a king for years, right, anymore. right. And I think, it, I mean, it's interesting to say, it, it's it's an, okay, an opportunity to say yourself, what's the end of my character? Why, what's the climax of right, this right. campaign, you know, that we didn't play? Right. And and not the climax of this Kickstarter, because, uh, of this kicker, because, Kickstarter, sorry. <laughs> of, this, <laughs> of this kicker, because, um, because we don't know the climax of a kicker. Yeah, we, we just know the beginning of the the last adventure. I think it will be. In, I I will enjoy this. I think if it, we could do this, be, yeah, and then get back and say, I know the climax of this of the life of this character. Right, and, right. And I want to do a new kicker that has nothing to do, but we know this happens, and and what right, happens, right. you know. 